Hello everyone, my name is Jarleo Barbosa. I was invited by the SAPS organization to conduct this talk with a very special guest named Valeria Richter. Uh, she was the head of the Torino Lab and she has a very unique study uh, based on audience and how to reach the perfect audience for your film and I want to start to say thank you Valeria for joining us and it's very uh, we are very happy to to have you here even if virtually uh, we're gonna split out our talking to in the first in the first round you gonna make your presentation and then the second round I will propose some questions and so we can discuss and talk about the theme okay so let's get started yes my name is uh, Valeria Victor and I really want to thank uh, Lidiana and Jaleo and Sapi for inviting me uh, to talk a bit about the concept of audience design so a few words about myself I'm based in uh, Copenhagen Denmark I was part of the team starting Torino Film Lab in 2008, and um, I have worked on building their workshop formats and testing new lab ideas over the years. Currently, I am head of studies for the Torino Film Lab Audience Design Fund, which supports uh, three projects per year with an award of uh, 45,000 euros for audience design actions, and it includes a consultancy with two of our alumni participants who plan a two-day workshop for the film team and develop an audience engagement strategy draft together with them. We then try to follow the projects as best possible during their release. In my daily work, I'm mainly a script writer developing my own projects and I work as a pitch coach and sometimes as a script consultant. Recently, I started to work on creating um, international network and lab formats, especially in relation to creating new spaces for less heard voices to come forward. So my journey with audience design started in 2011, when my colleague Lena Thiele and I first tried out the idea in a workshop. We kept developing and shaping the approach and the strategy concept, uh, which is then in the book, emerged over the next eight years. Uh, the book, which can be downloaded for free from the TFL website, is the result of this research and development process. And we shared it with all our participants, uh, many of whom now continue to develop the approach, working with film teams through the fund as coaches in other Torino Film Lab programs like um, Feature Lab, TFL Extended, a collaboration with the World Cinema Fund, as well as in other training programs. Uh, one alumni wrote a thesis inspired by it in Italy, and another one is writing a PhD in Germany on the subject. And I feel like in the last couple of years, the interest and debates around audience engagement and a better understanding of how to involve audiences from an earlier stage is spreading more widely and rapidly now. For example, here in my country, um, I'm in dialogue with a company who are developing an AI to support the use of audience input and testing during development. And they are testing it uh, with uh, partners around Europe. And the Danish Film Institute have initiated a two year focus. I mean, they have already done a lot of work, but now it's a specific two year focus on bringing the audience closer, as they call it. And they have a dedicated person to uh, coordinate, to gather experience, to create and test new methods and best practices for producers and distributors. Um, and there's this little pot of money as well that producers can apply until August, 2021 for audience related research um, funding for film projects. So that will be exciting to follow. So audience design became our name for this work process. There are other descriptions with the same focus, like um, audience-driven development, audience building, 
outreach production and more, um, especially in, within the documentary field, there are more cases and they have worked much more um, targeted with it than we have within fiction, for example. So uh, no matter what we call it, uh, audience design is a collaborative practice. It's aimed at giving producers and filmmakers the tools to work on this themselves. And through our workshops, we have started a new profession, hoping to inspire producers to hire audience consultants the same way they hire script consultants. Um, just to mention a few like uh, companies that are, are already also working within this field, like there's overlapping. There's a European marketing company, company who work at the forefront of these audience-centered approaches, and, and that's the Madrid-based, uh, the film agency. And there are companies like uh, Groovy, who were uh, interviewed at Cannes this year and the Black Film Fest in Tallinn just uh, this week about their audience tools. So um, what is our approach? Why do we need this focus? Because uh, <laughs> Audiences are everywhere and they're busy and they're overwhelmed. So the use of streaming has gone up significantly this year. And in order to reach this audience, we need to find out how they behave. Many films do not get the audience they deserve and could have had, in part due to the release models that are still favored uh, in most distribution strategies, even if it is absolutely changing. And I think this year will push on that change. Film was historically created with a scarcity model in mind. So it's only available for a certain time in certain cinemas or at a few festivals. But this old let's, scarcity model has not adapted to the constant access and availability that is now offered digitally. Scarcity is great when creating special events and audiences love it, but limitation is generally seen as an obstacle. So there are plenty of films that have a high technical and artistic quality, but are maybe lacking in what we call relevance and plenty of relevant films that are maybe drowning in the enormous quantities of content so our main challenge in the years to come is to minimize the noise and connect the right films or content with the right viewers. And we will probably need to find new technological tools. We definitely need more individually targeted um, communication and release strategies that extend through a film's full active lifetime. Um, so, we do need to ask ourselves, what are they doing? How can we make them choose our film? So audiences are the goal and design is whatever process helps to guide your film towards that audience in a way that connects what you want the film to communicate to the people that you most want it to speak to and to interact with. Um, what are these people doing where, how, and why that could connect them to your film and make them see it. So we all know, of course, that an audience consists of individual people who have their everyday lives, their social lives, their home lives, their digital lives, their private lives, and they move in all kinds of streams, offline and online. Your film also has a lifespan and audiences can start to engage with it from the moment it's becoming a reality. This can be the final draft, the moment of securing production funding or during the shoot. You decide when you want to open up the doors. But one advice that everyone in this field agrees on is that testing your assets like the goal that your project offers and your content during the production stages is necessary and it's cheap. In that way, it's also similar to the script process. Like paper, we say is cheap. Time sometimes costs, but it's, it's really worth that small investment 
at this stage. So because it can save you expensive marketing costs later as you will be more targeted and more sure of what to do when you reach the release and distribution stage. Your film also moves through different streams. And when you decide to invite an audience in on social media, for example, the question is, where can these streams meet? What experience do you want people to have? What do you want them to feel, to think? How do you communicate this experience to people who, for example, know that this is the kind of experience they want, your core audience, or don't know yet that this is an experience they want or need or long for? Or how do you plan to persuade people to give this experience a chance because it matters to you that you reach particularly these people and so on. So are you, for example, hitting the right note in your communication? Images and language can entice people or alienate people. That's why testing is so important. And you can't expect your distributor to do it that early in the development if you even have one on board yet, but you could propose it um, and collaborate about it, or you could just start on your own. So exploring and getting to know your story from the angle of any number of potential audiences is a different way of looking at your story. And this is what our process suggests solutions for. To look at your characters, your themes, any unique aspects of your story and the production in a way that is different from the process of script development because from seeing the story and your vision as a creator from the inside out, you now need to project yourself into someone else's eyes and emotions. Someone you haven't met yet, but have expectations about and someone you want your film to meet. So we need to look from the outside in. In order to engage people, relevance and passion are two key words. How does your story become relevant for someone? How can your passion to tell this story inspire a strong enough desire for them to want to invest their time, their money, their energy in it? You want to plant this desire in them so they make an active search. You want them to talk about it and go see it. You want them to talk about their experience, share their passion in wider streams so other people will share it and see your story as well. Audience awareness, engagement and outreach are becoming a more and more integrated part of so-called traditional sales, marketing, and distribution, and PR, of course. Um, so a lot of the ideas or the tools that we have are tools you might already know from working and collaborating in these other areas. Um, the digital opportunities are expanding massively, and the need for data is expressed widely. We don't know enough. So more and more people are asking for it. Um, so that puts pressure on funds and on the industry to develop ways of gathering, sharing, and using this data on how and why audiences act as they do, and hopefully for our common benefit. We need to think more about serving the audience and its desires rather than imposing films on them. This means to find out where we can meet them. What purpose do our films fulfill for them? It's, um, it's a change of mindset. And it also means taking ownership of your work in relation to the entire process of the creation, which includes creating the audience, so to speak. The content has to make sense in people's lives. It must fill a need. What audience design offers are some tools to start this awareness work earlier and to make sure that you know more about how to reach the right audience for your film when the time comes to release it. 
And there are many benefits from having enough time to do this. There's time to explore your material with these new eyes. There's time to try things out, fail, adjust, retry, and, and really to test, test and test. Because this can start from the final writing. It can definitely start in pre-production, production and post-production so that you can identify your best assets and gather intel, knowledge to more wisely produce and place your marketing materials for the premiere and beyond that. Audience design is a combination of tools to help you better know your best potential audience from an early stage. And by gaining a stronger sense of why and how to reach which people where, in which way, and with what anticipated result. Ultimately, the aim is to stand stronger and understand your communication options and choices better. There are often too many factors involved that we have no control over when it comes to the premiere and distribution cycle. We have all experienced surprise successes, missed opportunities, timing, good or bad, weather, or a world health crisis. However, just because there are many unknown factors, we're still better off taking more control of the factors that we can influence and to identify these factors by asking questions and finding meeting points between a story and its audience. How to make it easier for them to discover and share the things that, that they are interested in. There are no magical or right ways, there never were. There are experiences and resources to share. And the idea behind audience design was always to see what useful methods are already out there and to match them to the existing production stages and to invent whatever uh, is lacking. To put it all together in ways that are use useful for each individual project's needs and goals, scope and resources, and to assume a learning by doing attitude. The core of audience design is flexibility, adaptability, and to keep developing. As more people share their ideas and experiences and insights and data and share them freely within our community, we'll all benefit from each other's successes and our disappointments. Beyond our own single project, we all need audiences that want to keep engaging with film and audiovisual stories as an expression and art form. So our hope in building a community inspired by audience design is that it keeps expanding and for audience design to evolve and change and become whatever we, the filmmakers, storytellers, and our communities need it to be. It is not one static thing, even if we put it in a book, it's a, it's a movement. Stories are, stories are one of the oldest bridges between people. And right now, stories often have longer distances and more complex roads to journey to be able to reach their audiences. Even the first professional audience of sales agents and distributors are getting harder to engage. So if we already are aware of who we want to reach and ways to do it, it can only be an advantage. Another discussion related to this, but outside of our scope today, it's about challenging ourselves when we decide the format of a story in relation to its audience. Would it work better as a podcast, a book, a comic, a hybrid documentary, a web series, or as a fiction film? Does that audience even go to the cinema? Does every film need to have international potential? For example, could we find business models or funding schemes that support very local or regional audience targeted projects because that could still be a big audience. Um, 
or could we define our own relevant super niches within these new digital platforms? We need to ask questions about why things are as they are, what we need, what the audience needs, and whether things need to be different across the line from idea to audience. I believe we cannot escape more audience-focused dialogues as an art form and as an industry. Thank you, Valeria. It was very good. So now we have some questions for you. We have invited some Brazilian uh, players from industry to make some questions for you. And we're going to start with Paula Gomes from Olhar Distribuidora. And she said, in Brazil, the habit of thinking about the audience since the development is only beginning to grow. Uh, one of the main challenges faced by independent Brazilian producers that work with uh, art house films is the low budget. Uh, how to embrace this new need in a tighter budget? What advices can you give to these producers? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and it's one we address a little bit in the book because it's always a question of time and money. I think the, um, the best reply I can give is that you really only need time in the beginning, just like um, it, it, you, can make, you can take one day or two days and put on this other hat and, and look at your material, create your own little lab inside the production. And if people are willing to do it as part of the development, it's just like if, when you have a script meeting or another team meeting that you just take out a bit of time and, and do the brainstorm, explore your material, read it with different eyes. You don't necessarily need to hire any experts or anything. If you already have some distributor or sales agent that you're in contact with at a later stage, maybe you can involve them as well without it having to cost money. What we do here and what is maybe starting to happen is that um, cost for a person who focuses on audience could be to lobby with funds that it can approve, be approved in budgets so that when you make your um, development money or script money applications, you could add that into the budget or that you can steal a little bit from the production budget or steal a little bit from the marketing budget if you have such a budget. Um, but it is really um, the thing that costs, for example, if you boost some posts on Facebook, it costs you maybe, I only have it in euros, so like 100 euros or something like that. Uh, but of course, you need a little bit of money if you want to do the testing. Then again, you can also test it without money. You just need the time to make the, make the posts and have a young person who probably knows really well to navigate yeah. on social media to create the posts. But you can really start small. Don't let the money stop you from doing what you can without money, I think is the... Okay. I have two questions for you. One of them more basic, and I'm going to start with that one. Uh, how to manage the design, uh, the audience design in, in film? Uh, it is... A, a, a whole it is uh, there is, is there a person uh, responsible for this role or it is about a spread culture in the in the film uh, how to to apply that exactly um, you don't depend on having this one person like I said we are trying to create a new profession like the audience designer. Uh, but our participants have many different backgrounds. Some come from journalism, some work for sales agents, some are um, young junior producers, some, I mean, they work with digital marketing. They, they, some, one was a publicist and started her own company where she then included the, um, the tools and the approach from audience design. So every one of our participants who can now call themselves an audience designer 
um, they still also have different ways of implementing it into their other work or the way that they approach it. Like one was a script consultant and she implements it into that work. So that said, of course, it helps to have someone who knows it, but, but it can be anybody who thinks it's interesting. So if you have someone in your company um, or an intern or a production assistant or someone who finds this interesting, they could just go in and be the dedicated person to keep track of things. Because I think that's what I will also talk a bit about in, in the next section about the book is it's just important that there's one person who keeps track of these things, who maybe gathers everything in one document. Because I think a lot of you are already doing a lot of these things, but they're maybe spread out or maybe they don't come until very late in the process. So I don't think you need a particular education or something. You just need the interest in, in doing it and, and yeah. to dedicate one person to take care of it. So uh, the main goal would be create this profession, this role, and the existence of this professional would be better for all kind of films, yeah? Of course, it helps. Uh, and I think it's just based on interest. And it's not like it's... Um, you don't need a diploma, right? So anybody who reads the book who already has uh, some ideas of their own or knows something from their other work that they're doing can just start doing it. And I know um, if you Google on the internet, there are people doing similar work, calling it a little bit different and also the companies I mentioned that are maybe more also sort of overall marketing promotion. But these companies, of course, also like the film industry. So it costs money. So, so again, if, if you don't really have that, you need to find the ways of, of doing it without money. But I think what you said, what you asked in the question was also like that, like a culture or, um, and I think even, I mean, it's just, we, we hesitate to say the main producer should do it because the main producer is already doing so many things. So, but it's something that you can just add little things here and there because you're already meeting some of these people. So if you, if you just also try to think of your film team as a kind of audience resource, like your whole sound team, your composers, your, you know, your editors, everyone is also an audience for other things. They all have, or most of them have social media profiles and what things can you create for them to share? So everyone shares the same thing, uses the same hashtag and slowly you already mm. just by, by yeah. um, making your own team excited about talking about yeah. your project and you start spreading rings in the water and already that. So I think it's just really to just keep putting on, on the agenda in which using your, using your staff as a platform. Exactly. Yeah. The second question uh, comes from Barbara Sturm uh, from Elo Company. And she goes like, uh, with the changes in socialization and the isolation in 2020 and the transformations in the audiovisual industry, the widow between cin cinemas and VODs growing smaller, requiring uh, campaigns in both formats. What are the differences between a live and a digital audience? This is the question. And are these separating entities? Or should we think about them as one? So, uh, what are the differences between a live and a digital audience? And we have to think these two things are as a unity or a separated uh, entity. It's difficult to answer in the sense that um, I think the people who go to the cinema who would like the experience in the cinema, they also watch things uh, in streaming. There was, um, I think in the big cities, there are more people because it's just easier physically to get to a cinema. Yeah. That audience is more in the big cities. But they also watch streaming at home. Then there are the different generations where sometimes we can be surprised how someone who is 60 does the same as someone who's 16 in certain contexts, but in others, they are worlds apart. So it's become more difficult to say um, 
in age groups, but for sure the young audience, um, what makes them go to the cinema? It's because they want an event. They want a big experience. Yeah. And it's the same, I think, with we still have books. Young people, uh, vinyl shops are opening, you know, like record vinyls, music. That is coming back as a, it's a niche, but it's a big enough niche for vinyl shops to reopen again. So I think it's the same. Cinema will always be there, but it will be, we, and that's why what I said with data, we just need more data as well. Like which people outside of the cities would like to go to the cinema, but they don't have the opportunity. Which people in the big cities go, what makes them go to the cinema? Is it only the big films or it's more the social experience of going with friends, with your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriends, things like this. It's a social experience. So, so I think the, what the, I can say for this question is that it's becoming more and more difficult to see any type of audience as a big homogenous group. And that's why, for example, this AI project is quite interesting because they have this platform where together with producers, they can ask a question to like, it was a girl for a film targeted for girls between 12 and 15 or something was one of the cases. And, and so they had some specific questions for this target group. So they go out on some platform, I don't know, where you can ask questions and invite people to make a little video of themselves as, and answering the question. And here they got a lot of um, knowledge while they were still writing the script about what the different age groups were thinking. And, and like he said, like I, I said that you suddenly discover um, how a 15 year old in one place and a 15 year old in another place can be worlds apart. But a 15 year old here and a 55 can suddenly have something in common where you can reach them. So it's, um, it's really a challenge, but it's also, I think, very fascinating. And um, I think there's a lot that we don't know, but we just have to try and work with what we have as we move along. And so I don't know, like for Brazil, for example, I'm sure there's huge differences with access to cinemas. And I think if this year is going to push the fact that films can have premiere online closer to a small boutique cinema premiere, for example, and you can use the marketing and the interviews and things to benefit both releases, then you get more value for your money. And that could be very interesting, especially for art house films. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a big discussion. And I think it's important to find out who we need to get into the dialogue about getting to know more about this and how to become better so that we don't waste our marketing money and, and lose people along the way who would have loved to see what we have to offer. We have another question from Gabriel Pires from Nordeste Lab. Uh, it is possible to say that a work has a universal uh, reach and if yes, how to argue for this universality using the central elements of the work to help its production? I think almost, I mean, that is almost already a part of, of when you start making applications for script funding or financing that you already, or if you go to a, a market and you have to pitch your project, you already have to be aware of what is the unique aspect and what is the universal aspect. So um, when, when I do pitch coaching and also when we do audience design um, workshops, we always try to find the core of the project and that can obviously change. Um, but what is the project most about more than anything else? Uh, what is the most important aspect of the project? I think it's a great exercise when you have the script to just start writing log lines and short synopsis. Like it's such a silly thing, or but it's such a good tool. Like if you have to write what your film is about in one or two lines, and and you can write a lot of different because suddenly you realize that 
it's about this, but it's also about this, but which is more important or do I need to put them together or, and, and sometimes we tend to write the short synopsis just on the plot, but sometimes it makes it sound boring or like, mm. so maybe you try to write it more from a emotional or thematic perspective or from a character's perspective, or it, it just opens up new ways of trying to find the hooks, the things, that mm -hmm. people might connect to your story with. And so I think we sometimes forget when we do this work that it's about emotions. Um, it can be very intellectual, but we usually catch people on emotions. Like there's a whole new with the streaming. I, I just, I, there was just a Danish TV festival this weekend and there's a whole new drama model. Like we, we all know sort of the model with the first, second, third act and the climax, and then it goes down and, you know, sort of a classic three act structure, which probably, you know, is, is one of many structures we can use, but because of streaming, there are analysis that shows that you have for like, and on YouTube, of course, but in the streaming, let's say for the more adult audience, you have maybe one and a half minute before someone decides if they wanna, you know, they click play to see the film, within 90 seconds they might stop and go back in the menu and find something else to watch. So you have 90 mm -hmm. seconds, so you need to put some of the best in the beginning. So these researchers did a whole new um, model of a dramaturgy, which they call the dragon, because it starts high and then it just goes up and up and up and up. And then whatever you need to resolve, and then you end on another high and that's the head of the dragon up there. So, so it's like every time you cut to a new scene, you risk losing the audience and oh, you as a writer, you get really stressed about it, but it's, the very, of plot point. it's very interesting because you know, the way we tell the stories and then the way the audience, their habits are becoming, and then how do we then sell the story? So it's also like what you call the universal could also just be a really great, hook or a teaser or something that would make people become curious to want to know more about it. So yeah. we need to renegotiate a little bit these things, but, but I think, and, and it's the same if you're, if you're making an application, you want to persuade someone who sits on a bunch of money and makes decisions to bet on your film. And they have, they have to explain to their boss why they want your, this fund to support your film and not the other one. And then they maybe even have a boss or then there's, you know, so the more you can, you can figure out what it is that might appeal to people on a more broader scale and what makes yours unique. Like, because if you have a lot of genre projects, um, you can say a horror is a horror, but it's not. It's a horror on certain levels, but then this is unique for this horror film. And this is the universal part, or this is what the fans expect, but this is what we want to make different. So I think it's, yeah, to have this dialogue with your material in a way. I, I would like to know um, about the directing aspect. Uh, there is something very important that you bring in your studies uh, that has to do with the maintenance of the authorship. Uh, I mean, how to embrace this need of to reach a, an audience uh, with the the director voice. Uh, of course, he wants to keep its voice, uh, his voice, and at the same time, the film has to to to. To, to balance with these needs, to, to, to make your own path. What do you have to say about that? I think, um, I think definitely it's very important. Um, and I think we try to do that with audience design by involving the writer, the director, the producer uh, as the core team, but even you can involve in, on a wider scale. Um, that they have to each think, what is their vision? Do they share this vision? What is the core for the director? What is the core for the producer and or the writer if they are different people? Do they agree about what the core of the project is? I think the, the questions and the process that, that the book suggests 
does respect everyone's word to be heard and to figure out um, also the things that you do not want. Like, for example, we had a film from, from Africa and then the whole team knew they would, did not want to market it as an African film because that's a long story I don't want to get into, but in their experience in their market, which was France, they knew that if they market it in that way, they will only attract a certain audience, which they were not interested in attracting. So we had to work around finding completely a, like focus on the main character was a strong woman, focus on a lot of other things and sort of forget the fact that it was an African film. Uh, so that was important for the director. And so I think by, by ex, um, respecting that, a lot of nice, new, different creative ideas emerged from the process. Mm -hmm. So, and at the same time, I think a director also needs to understand um, if they want people to see their film, that maybe you need to be able to give the freedom to the people who know more about promotion, selling, marketing, to also you set a framework and that's where the strategy, like if you make an audience strategy or some kind of document in your team, then you already have some ideas of yes and no and, and that, which you can give to these people, but then you also need to give them a freedom to do their work and that they will respect if you say, I don't want it to be promoted like this, that they will respect that. But at, and, and you can create materials. I, I will talk about that in a minute as well. Like if you create some materials during the shooting, you already maybe have um, the power to say, we have some really great material that you can then give to the distributor and the marketing for them to use. And so you have more control if you start earlier. And I think so that should appeal to the directors. But at the same time, I think they are great at directing. And, and we trust them and they need to also sometimes trust the people who do the marketing and maybe some of the ads uh, or some of the clips are not their favorites, but if it brings people to the film and they're not totally lying or whatever, then, then I think they, they should allow the space for that as well. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think that uh, every director is always struggling with this uh, question. Is this story just in my head? Is just interesting? Is uh, just me? Uh, by the other side, uh, it's a story that's interesting. Ever one, but me, because I I don't want to do a film that don't interest me. So how to do something that interests me, but at the same time talks with people because this is the key of the profession talk to people yeah true uh, i think sometimes we get surprised when we start to ask these questions and look from the outside in that we can get surprised about things that will talk to people that we didn't think about would talk to people uh, i think if you put if it matters to you and you put your passion in it, there will be some people out there who will also appreciate that and see that and resonate with that. So the big question is to find those specific people. Maybe your film is not for a big wide audience. Maybe it is for a particular niche or group of people who love this thing and your job or, you know, yes, job in a way would be to find ways to make sure that these people that have the same passion as you will find your film. And maybe sometimes that's only at festivals, but in other occasions, maybe you, with the big digital opportunities we have, you could actually find them and identify them. Um, and, it, and sometimes it spreads, like we've seen that so many times, that's something that seems more of a special taste that project suddenly it reaches wider audience as well so yeah yeah but that 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 is the the challenge because there is so much out there and people are busy so how do you make sure that you know this type of people will really find that your that your film is being made and that they can have something that they can be excited about yeah and not to think that you are crazy am i crazy i mean <laughs> oh, <laughs> tell a story that nobody yeah. wanna see 
so well. But it, it's not easy. And uh, it's, I mean, audience design is not like a magic bullet like that. It's, yeah. but all marketing, all public relation, um, all this work is, is hard to predict and it takes an effort and yeah, it's, um, there are no shortcuts, I guess, to the audience, but if you don't do anything, then, you know, yeah. then what? So, so <laughs> it's like, yeah. You have to try. Have uh, to try. Uh, so Valeria, I want to thank you so much. The conversation was so, so great. We have learned a lot. We are honored to talk with you. And, and thank you. we hope that we can meet each other after the COVID. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, that would really be wonderful.